this week we'll be taking a look at the RPG for the Wonder Swan with a most amazing name, Kakuto Ryori Densetsu Bistro Recipe Wonder Battle Hen, or as it would be translated into English, The Legend of Combat Cooking Bistro Recipe Wonder Battle Edition. It was developed by Red Company, published by Ben Presto, and released on September 30th, 1999. Red Company is the previous incarnation of Red Entertainment Corporation, prior to a change in ownership in the year 2000. Red is probably best known for its help in co-producing the Sakura Taisen franchise with Sega, a highly polished visual novel and strategy game hybrid with memorable characters and fantastic music. It's debatable how good Red is at the actual development of video games, but one thing everyone can agree on is how good they are at character development. Red manages to tie together a character design with fantastic voice actor selection, and great writing that makes everything feel super harmonious, and having a lovable party of characters goes a long way towards expanding a game's IP into a larger multimedia franchise. I'm bringing this up because Bistro Recipe is clearly Ben Presto trying to take on Pokémon, and while it failed, it did briefly attempt to blossom into a cross-media project. Three games were released in the franchise, a manga ran for a whole year in Comic Bonbon, bon, the same magazine that Episode 19's Betterot series was featured in, and a 26-episode anime adaptation aired on NHKBS2 on Tuesday evenings in late 2001. Shockingly, the second game in the Bistro SP series was released just a week later on October 8th on the Game Boy Color, and the third was released on December 10th, also on the Game Boy Color. Whereas this game is a traditional RPG, the Game Boy titles are instead in a board game format, where landing on certain areas invokes either a cooking minigame or a battle. Oddly enough, the Wonderswan game and the first Game Boy game have different stories, but the second Game Boy game refers to events that happened in the first Wonderswan game. That must have been incredibly confusing to people who only owned one system at the time. The story of the game is pretty simple. You travel around the world on a ship, and enter food-on fight tournaments in hopes of becoming the champion. That's pretty much all there is to it. Nothing is under threat, there isn't really an enemy faction to care about, it's all about going out there and proving you're the best at cooking. Where Bistro Recipe differs from Pokémon is how you catch monsters, or as they are called in this game, Foodon. Your character is a Bistorer, a person who's able to give life to food through cooking, and you can awaken Foodon by being a good cook. The way you cook and awaken Foodon in this game is actually by playing a DDR-like minigame where you need to press directional buttons in time. Your skill level in this minigame determines how good the base stats of your new Foodon will be, and if you get an S rating on the minigame, your Foodon will have an extra skill that can't be obtained otherwise. There are 100 different Foodon to collect in this game, spread across four types – Japanese, Western, Chinese, and Ethnic – for the four types of cuisine in this game. Japanese, Western, Chinese act in the usual rock-paper-scissors fashion, and Ethnic is completely neutral. There's also some good flavor wins when it comes to the battle system. You can use topping items in-game to buff yourself or debuff enemies. If you use a topping that complements the dish your food on represents, they'll get stronger, and if you use something that would clash with it, they'll get weaker. This is a very endearing little RPG for the Wonder Swan, and one I would love to spend more time playing. Much like Metarot Perfect Edition, even though it's riffing on the Pokémon formula, there's enough originality on display here that it's not just a Pokémon clone, and there's something to enjoy if you're a fan of the monster collection genre.